Hey guys, how you all doing? Welcome back. Today is day two of the series. We're aiming to finish the, the gable here now. And then um, we're gonna move on to the side section here. But no further ado, let's dive right into the video. Before you jump into the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cool videos like this one. Let's get started. Yeah, so this is where we are, guys. As you see here, I installed my weeping plastic. Usually, weeping plastic is what we use to help to prevent the water from going on the inside. After weeping plastic, our next step is to install our Tyvek. Followed by that, we're gonna tape our scene. Now I'm just taking some measurement to know what size joint we need to work in order to reach right up to the sills. You draw the ones you reach up, once you reach to um, your window or your doorway, you're normally working for. You're gonna take another measurement, maybe to another window or another door, which I'm doing right now. I'm just working for my sills. My sills is three inches, so I leave, I measure three and three quarter or even four inches. And then we, t we work from that come down. Here I'm just putting a little bit of mortar on my corner post just to remove the old marks that's already there. And now I'm just going to take some measurement. The measurement that I got was um, zero 01. So we're just going to mark zero 01. And uh, you'll find that in the middle of zero and one. And we're just going to mark that right up until we reach right up to where our sill is. That way we don't have to put any form of cut underneath our window. So it's very important to check your measurement as you go. When you reach up to our sill, you'll see I'm going to take another measurement to work for the top of the, the, the door. So keep on watching. That's coming up soon. Lane bricks, I like to fit the bottom first, bring it all the way down to the existing brick and then just rub it over to the line, like bring it over to the line. I find that way kind of um, easier. And instead of tap it down, I like to just rub it rather than just tap it down. I find that faster as well. So here I'm just working my way across the door now. Um, you want to always remember to leave your weeping hole just in case there is any water go behind the wall later on it can escape and come through the weeping hole so usually for a size um, window like this usually i'll leave like two weeping hole i'll just measure the window and just share the the hole try to put it like mm -hmm. you know try to put it like water on both sides I put my brick down and I rub it then I just cut the excessive mortar off just um, the same mortar I cut off I use it to butter my next brick learning to lay brick you don't you basically want to try to get it right you don't want to try to go as fast as you had a um, brick friends that may uh, might be on the line laying bricks with you focusing and get it lay properly to the bring it just a slight away from the line it's very important to line up your new brick with the existing brick. So make sure that at the bottom of the existing brick and the new brick, they're both flush with each other. Because if you don't make sure, then you might have a belly in your wall later on as you go up. Putting the brick in the corner, it's very important to put your level on each brick all the bricks going across my level i always put my level that one right now i'm laying this one right now but afterwards when i'm laying the one that turn in the other direction i'm going to put my level across just to make sure that the first one that you see i lay here is a hundred percent plumb or maybe plumb with the corner because we're going to have a return there so you want it to be level with the corner um should say it instead of plumb Hey, 
Cool. I'm just doing a little bit of drying here now. Um, this type of mud to dry pretty fast. It's a clay brick that we're laying, so it absorbs the water really fast. So we try to we try to dry it as we go, so that we don't kind of have the joint dried out too much before we go ahead and join it. I think doing that you get a better looking joint. Sometimes you might see a little bit of spot on our brick. Um, what I normally use for that is a wire brush. So I'll just wait until the wall finish and um, I work my way from the top come down that way um, if we go up and a little bit of modest spell, it won't make a mess, you know, it will make a mess. So it's better to just wait and, and just clean everything at once. And um, that way, you know, you know that you don't have to go back over it rather than try to clean it. No, if you have a small spot, I still try to clean as I go though. the corner I was telling you as you see a while ago I just used my level just to level across just to make sure that we carry in the wall that's gonna join with this wall here it's gonna be level 100% it's very important to level as you go guys a lot of guys when they're tweeting a corner like this they tend to you know skip the leveling process and it's very important to level it because whenever you're ready to do your, the, the other wall that's gonna go the, the opposite direction it's gonna you know level and join with this wall nicely just put in some brick ties now as you already know brick ties is what we use to help to maintain the strength of the wall So when you hop this high, it's important to try to get the, 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 the flooring and try and put a whole bunch of brick ties in your flooring once you reach up to the flooring. Because sometimes some bricklayers tend to not this, to find the studs inside. And some of some of us as bricklayers, are, you know, it's a bit lazy sometimes. As you see here, James kind of put the brick tie, the, the nails a bit too high. I prefer to put them lower so I just go back over and I'm just putting some nail in the lower hole. In my opinion it holds more better. In bricks it's important to clean the back of your brick as you see um, you want to clear the cavity just so that you can maintain a clear space from the bottom go up so as you spread your mortar try and clear the back um, just so you have um, a clear cavity space go up it's important to have a hinge or a half an inch they try to work with like a hinge cavity space I would say between a hinge to three quarter of an inch go all the way up this is how it looks now guys yeah, I tape off my scene. I have my weeping plastic right underneath the window. Right here is where we're gonna leave a space for the weeping hole just in case any water were to go in there later on. We'll escape and it will come through this hole that we're gonna leave here. If you have any question concern in this um, project that we're doing you're, a, you're an apprentice want to learn you have any question you want to ask feel free to leave them in the comment section I, um, I read all the comments sometimes I might you know slack to response to some of them being as I'm extremely busy most of the time but I promise I will get to them um, don't feel away if I don't get to them right away but um, you can feel free to go ahead and leave the question there Weeping hole, daddy boy. I leave one weeping hole here. 
what is what we use for the water to run through. So here I reach right up to the top of where my seal need to be. Once we reach there, our next step is to measure from where the seal is up to the top of the window. That's where we're going. So now we just measure to see what number we have to work in order to get up there. The same process, rub out the old mark so that we don't make a mistake by putting the, the line on the wrong mark. Now I'm just taking some more marks again to work my way to reach right up to the top of the window. It's very important to measure as you go so that way you reach right up there without have to do any form of cuttings to get up there a lot of bricklayers tend to be lazy at that by not measuring as they go um, and then when they reach up there they have to work with an extremely big joint in order to reach up to the top of your window or your door there i'm just measuring i put a brick the brick is around three and a half inches you want to leave three and a half inches space and um, either side of your window as a step over for your sills so i'll just put the, the bricks there and i just leave a space for my joint and that should work rather than just go get your tape you can also use a tape and measure like three and a half to four inches from there so here i'm just installing my sills now very important to install all three so that way you can put your line right across to make sure all three of them are in line so as I put the first one I butter beside it so that way it can join with each other there I'm just measuring to make sure that the sill all of them is in line and I also catch my slope put some brick tie here before we go ahead and put our Tyvek continue on us up with our wall and you want to tape your scene as you go it's very important to help to prevent you know any form of so here I'm just having my just installing my board that's gonna go right up this board that I installed there just to buck my brick onto it so that way we have a nice straight brick going right along our window one of the reasons why I did that the window is um, they should have bring the window more outwards so that way we have space to you know to use as a guide to buck our brick so all I did I just measure the two by four quarter inch away from the window so that way we have a quarter inch caulking space from where the brick joined to the window. Guys, if you're getting volley from this video so far, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps YouTube to promote the video so that others can view and learn from. As you see, my main reason here is just to teach homeowners and you know new guys who are trying to learn to come into the trade. And as you guys might know out here, it's hard to find bricklayers. So I just want to try to get the word out there to as many apprentices as possible, guys who are interested to learn how to become a bricklayer. And hopefully later on they can come on board and work with us because I always need extra hand. A lane brick is very important to maintain the band. You always want to have a straight line running from the bottom, go all the way up to the top. And um, a way to get that is to maintain and have a consistent joint. So if you're going with a 3 8 or half an inch joint, um, you try to maintain that. So that way you have a consistent looking joint from the bottom. It looks more professional in my opinion to have a straight line running from the bottom, go all the way up to the top.
Ja, man, jetzt ist das fast, man. Das ist 60 Jahre hier Ja, man, fast, man. Wo fast. Ja, man, die der man. Weizberg, ja. Ja, ich will da pushen, ne, die der man. Ja, da kommen wir da lesen. Ich will da lesen. So now we're just doing some drying here now so that we can move on up. Doing a joint is very important to do the head joint and afterwards you do the bed joint. So guys we're getting there as you see here we're close to our gable now. Working our way I reach right up to the top of my window just like we measure. I measure here so that my bricks about about quarter inch above the window it's very important to have your brick go above the window a bit at least half an inch to quarter inch you don't want to have your brick sitting level on to your window so that way when you put your angle line your angle line should go a, a bit um your angle line should be at least quarter to half an inch above the window one other reason for that moving the window if there is any um damage done to the window rather than have to damage the brick to get the window out. and clean our window now guys you see right now we're just cleaning up and we're gonna go down and start another wall 